Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking another look at the Elite Mini HX90 from Menace Forum. Now, if you're not familiar with this little mini PC, there's been a lot of controversy around it, mainly liquid metal issues. Over on the product page, if you take a look, you'll see that it states that this thing uses liquid metal to help keep that CPU cool. Instead of using regular old thermal compound, the HX90 should have liquid metal on it. Unfortunately, this actually turned out to be a big mess for some reviewers. They sent Gamers Nexus two of these units, and there was liquid metal all over the interior. And come to find out, as soon as he pulled that heatsink off, it wasn't using liquid metal at all. It looks like they initially applied it, it really didn't work out, so they just went with regular thermal paste. Now this does present a problem because this liquid metal is super conductive. If it gets in between any of these connectors or circuits on the board itself, it can definitely short it out, and there is a chance that it could even cause a fire. Since that all came to light, Menace Forum posted a YouTube video showing us that it's now trained their technicians to properly apply this liquid metal to the HX90. It looks like they're doing a decent job getting it done, but what we have here on the left hand side is my pre-production unit, which I'm pretty sure doesn't have liquid metal on it. And on the right hand side, we have a brand new production unit that they sent over. This should have liquid metal properly applied. So in this video, what we're going to do is a quick tear down of my pre-production unit. We're just going to take a look at that. And then we're going to move over to the new unit to see if they've done this correctly or not. Now in my initial review video, we did do a quick tear down on this. I didn't pull the heatsink off because I didn't have any extra liquid metal to replace it with in case there was liquid metal on it. And while scanning over the the motherboard I didn't notice any you know liquid metal thrown around the case itself or on the motherboard so I don't think liquid metal ever hit this unit here like I mentioned this is a pre-production unit and I'm pretty sure they're just using regular old thermal paste on this one so I'm going to go ahead and get everything off of this unit I do need to pull the board out it's actually pretty simple to get in here we do have a spot for two 2.5 inch hard drives in this thing and there's only a couple screws to remove this but it's a little cumbersome to get the whole board out you do have to lift one side up and pull the other side back to get all the ports out of the case itself but it can be done so we'll just lift this up here and uh like i said it's just a little odd how they got this set up put a little pressure over on the back side just to get the ports out make sure that usb and everything clears and we can lift the main board out of the case, but there is kind of a front daughter board that's uh, connected using this ribbon cable. But yeah, now that we have the main board out, we can take a closer look at this. And like I mentioned in my original review, we did do a quick scan over the board itself. And going back to the footage, I didn't notice any liquid metal anywhere on this thing. When Gamer Nexus pulled his apart, I mean, there was liquid metal on the cooler itself. It looked like it splashed up through the fan and the fan kind of threw it around the interior of the case. This one here is super clean. That's why I'm pretty sure that liquid metal was never applied to this one here. Alright, so let's go ahead and pull the heat sink and fan off of this thing. We got four screws in the back side. So with those out of the back side, we should be able to lift this cooler right up. Maybe. There we go. And yeah, just as I thought, regular thermal paste. It doesn't look like the greatest paste job, but it kept that CPU cool enough when I was doing all of my testing. But with a better paste job and some high quality thermal paste, I think we could get a little better thermal performance out of this thing. But just taking a look at the board itself, I don't see any liquid metal here, none on the back side of this cooler. And none of it was thrown around by the fan inside of this case. So now let's go ahead and move over to the production unit. This new one should be using liquid metal, at least that's what they claimed when they sent it over to me. We'll go ahead and unbox this right here and go ahead and tear it down. I'm not even going to boot it up. We'll just see what we're working with as soon as we pull this cooler off. If I can get this plastic off, then we can get right in here. And when it comes down to it, whether we have thermal paste or liquid metal on either of these, I mean, performance will be the same between the two, because with my original unit with no liquid metal, we never hit thermal throttle. Of course, with the liquid metal, we should get lower temps, which could result in higher boost clocks for longer out of this 8-core 16-thread mobile Ryzen APU. It really wasn't the performance I was worried about. It was actually just them advertising this having liquid metal, and some of them that they sent out to reviewers didn't have any liquid metal at all. Or it was just such a mess that it actually turned out to be a little dangerous because, I mean, if this thing shorted out in the correct way, there is a chance that it itself could catch fire. More likely, it probably would have just shorted something out and stopped working altogether, but, you know, there's always still that little bit of a chance. And I'm actually already noticing something a little bit different here. Instead of having security screws on the bottom, this actually has Phillips head screws. Now 
So with the cover off, everything's looking basically the same here. That uh, hard drive bracket itself does look like it's a different color, but that could just be my eye. Now I need to go ahead and get this board out of the case, but the first thing I want to do is just pull this hard drive bracket out of here, and we're going to take a closer look to see if there's any liquid metal on the board itself. And so far, I'm not seeing any remnants of liquid metal. You see here, it's actually pretty clean. But they have added a little bit to this. Disassembly is prohibited. And uh, we're going to go ahead and ignore that because we want to pull this cooler off and see what's going on inside. So one thing that I've been informed about is that the cooler is now glued to the CPU, so I will have to heat it up to get it off properly, or I could just pry it out of here. But I just opted to use my little heat station here. Got a soldering station with some hot air. I'm not going to get it too hot. I don't want to melt anything. I should be able to soften up the adhesive so I can get this cooler off a lot easier. So now that we have it out of the case, let's go ahead and take a closer look just to make sure we don't have any liquid metal everywhere on this thing. We'll do this in one shot. And so far, so good. I'm not seeing any liquid metal spread around this thing. Cooler is clean, the fan is clean, and the board itself. So now, really, we need to get this cooler off. And from the back side, we have four screws that need to come out. And I'll put a little bit of heat on it once we get those out, just to soften everything up. They're using some kind of little pad here with some adhesive on it, just to keep that liquid metal in place. I'm probably going to have to put some more heat on it. And yeah, it doesn't want to go anywhere. When I'm heating it from the bottom, the cooler is just sucking up all that heat. So I'm going to get the bottom and the heat sink itself. Just try to get it up to temperature and then we'll get it off. Hopefully that's good. I'm going to put a little more pressure on it. Oh man, this is on there. There we go. And yeah, we definitely have liquid metal. Not bad at all, and they've actually set it up with a couple layers of protection here, so nothing ever leaks out. And you know, I'm not a liquid metal expert, but it does look like it's applied properly. It's making contact with that CPU and the cooler. We got a nice even spread there. And overall, I mean, this should definitely work out. I mean, using liquid metal on this might help out with temperatures a little bit, but uh, in the beginning, they should have just went with regular old thermal paste to alleviate any kind of issues. They probably should have just upgraded the cooler in this unit. I mean, we have dual heat pipes with this cooler here. They could have went with like a quad heat pipe setup and got just as good temps in this little case. But it really comes down to marketing. They wanted this thing to have liquid metal. They definitely wanted you to know that it had liquid metal. Unfortunately, with some of the first units that went out, it wasn't applied properly. And that was a big letdown for a lot of people. I'm actually a big fan of Menace Forum. They do release a lot of these awesome Ryzen and Intel powered mini PCs. And that's something I'm really into. I love these little mini gaming PCs. But uh, for them to do this, it was a big letdown. Hopefully, they never pull anything like this again. And really, they just need to stay away from that liquid metal. They should go with a better cooler here that would have made things a lot better and I think marketing still would have been really good with a mini PC that has this much power. And when it comes down to it, the pre-production unit that I reviewed only had regular old thermal paste on it. No liquid metal whatsoever, as we saw. We did a little bit of a teardown at the beginning of this video, and I didn't hit thermal throttle with that unit. Temps were actually pretty decent while gaming and benchmarking. Another thing that was mentioned in their marketing material was the chassis was made of some kind of composite carbon fiber. And it's actually true that it has 3% carbon fiber. If you check out the Bowers video, I'll leave a link in the description. He had this analyzed. And the chassis material only contains 3% carbon fiber. So while it's true that there is carbon fiber in here, there's not a ton of carbon fiber. And they really should have just said it's kind of a carbon fiber look chassis. That would have made things a lot better for everybody. But the way it looks right now, they have fixed the liquid metal issue. If you're interested in checking out my original review, I'll leave a link for that in the description. I'm also going to leave a link to the video that Gamers Nexus created and Der Bauer's video. In that one, he also does a teardown on a newer model. 
He's a much smarter guy than I am, and he said that the liquid metal application actually looked pretty good on these units. But that's going to wrap it up for this video. I really appreciate you watching. I had a lot of people asking about this, so I figured I'd go ahead and get another unit and just take a look at the production unit, just to make sure everything was fixed. And so far, so good. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. And like always, thanks for watching.